Hey, this is John and welcome back to the channel. I just finished up a master class, Athletes and Pronation, and had a wonderful time fleshing out this masterpiece of a whiteboard and also uh, sharing with some athletes uh, what the science says about pronation, how we can understand it, and also leverage it for our greatest performance and long-term health. What I'm gonna attempt to do is take that hour presentation and put it into a 10 minute or less video for you if you were not able to check out that masterclass experience. So first of all, let's take a look at the human foot and recognize that it is just a masterpiece of design. The architecture of the foot is totally amazing. We've got 28 bones, 33 joints, and over 100 uh, muscles, ligaments, tendons, blood vessels, and nerves. There are three arches in the foot. We have the medial longitudinal arch, a lateral longitudinal arch, and also the transverse metatarsal arch. And when a person has a slightly higher arch foot, we typically will call that pes cavus, and a, a flatter foot would be termed pes planus. But there is no right or wrong. Uh, there's a lot of room for individual variants in the human beast. When we move from point A to point B, that's locomotion. We're upright or bipedal beasts, and if we're not crawling or swimming, we're walking, jogging, and running, as well as sprinting. And I'm not going to talk about the acceleration phase of sprinting, which uses slightly different gait mechanics than maximum velocity or upright running, but we're going to look at those things today. All of this locomotion is called gait, and we've got two phases. Stance is when the foot's on the ground, and swing is when the foot's in the air. There are more terms than, than we could use today, but initial contact is when the foot uh, strikes the ground uh, at first. Foot flat is obvious. Mid stance, again obvious. Heel off and toe off. And so we'll touch on those in this mini presentation. Pronation is just a word, first of all. It's not uh, a disease or something to be misinterpreted or misunderstood. It is simply this. It's the process that our foot uses to accommodate or adapt to the support surface. Rolling down and in, essentially. And that happens in three planes. And when we have triplanar movement of the foot about a unique axis, we see the calcaneus or heel bone roll inward from the top, that's eversion. The talus or top foot bone will rock backwards into the ankle or mortise, that's dorsiflexion. And then lastly, the forefoot will abduct or move away from midline as it splays or spreads to adapt to the support surface. That's pronation in a nutshell. What it does is it unlocks the foot, makes it more flexible, and it happens when our foot's on the ground, effectively converting it into a paw. You can test this out yourself by simply trying to expose the sole of your foot to hell, if you will, and that's a demonstration when you do it in your foot of what pronation looks like. Now the reverse is known as supination, and we need to supinate the foot so that we can have a rigid lever with which to push off. So those motions at the calcaneus, the talus, and the forefoot all reverse, and this effectively helps to lock up the foot. You can test this out by uh, turning your uh, soul to heaven or trying to expose your soul to heaven, and in doing that, you will effectively uh, experience what supination looks like in the air. Uh, we have a supinated foot roughly, approximately, relatively, when we make initial contact with the ground, and then we pronate, and then as we are towing off, in order to make the foot more rigid again, we resupinate from the rear foot and midfoot. This makes the foot into a claw, gives us a better ability to uh, distribute force and power, and primarily we're using that position uh, in the air. Now, Strike uh, of the foot on the ground uh, tends to be on the lateral aspect of the foot and it tends to be at or near the heel with walking or should. And then as we jog, run, and sprint, that will move forward on the foot. And again, a lot of variance there, uh, but these are general patterns that we tend to see. This is a busy block 
But basically, I wanted to show how when we're doing those four motions of walking, jogging, running, and sprinting, the line of force, based on force plate studies, travels through the foot in slightly different patterns. The take-home message here is that all roads lead to Rome, or in this case, the big toe. We need to be able to push off the big toe and preferably near the center or even lateral edge of it as opposed to be pushing off the medial side, inside edge of the big toe. Pronation is a natural and necessary cycle in our human function. So when we strike, that foot is in a supinated or claw-like position, and then it begins to be pronating. And then when we push off, it's pronated, but it is supinating. Um, kind of semantics, but it's good to understand that those pronation and supination features in the foot will go back and forth very much like a wave. As we pronate the foot, it becomes flexible to accept force, and as we supinate it, it becomes rigid to transfer force. The big debate that we have these days in biomechanics circles is the terms that we use to describe this foot function. Um, it is entirely possible that a person would be inadequate in their total amount of pronation, sometimes labeled under pronator. Over pronation is typically more common or more commonly considered to be a problem. And some thought leaders will also say that, well, you can only pronate so far after which you're turning the entire foot, which is uh, known as whole foot eversion. Regardless, pronation and supination are used to effectively create this event happening. That is uh, that we push off the big toe, which is our powerful and intended lever to do so, with a rigid foot. That's the whole uh, purpose of this dynamic foot function. Now, where the problems come in can be looked at from a basic physics uh, standpoint. Rate, amplitude, and duration are easily uh, explained. So in other words, when we're looking at pronation, rate is, if we have a problem with rate, we're pronating too rapidly. So that's a high velocity movement which can cause tissue stress. If we have amplitude, which is excessive, that's moving too far. So maybe now pronation is bottoming out and putting uh, end range stresses on our tissues, which they don't desire. But the big one for me is duration. In other words, how long is the foot staying in a pronated state? And if we see pronation either happening too late or too long in the gait cycle, the stance phase, uh, we're going to be pushing off of a flexible foot on the medial aspect of the big toe, which is not desirable. So the solutions to optimizing pronatory foot function, especially for lifetime athletes, is to uh, first of all have an awareness that much of this, uh, much of the problems that we have are due to shoe wear, which we do as modern humans. And that can make the foot uh, weak and atrophied and actually um, neurologically deficient or almost numb to how it needs to function. And so if we're aware of that, we can practice it with shoes on, but also with shoes off, which would be more desirable where it's safe and appropriate. Now with exercise, it's not really necessary to do tons of uh, isolation exercises for the foot and ankle, but instead to exercise barefoot where it's appropriate for some of your um, running and gym-based exercise. That's going to enable you uh, to uh, activate the foot and use it most appropriately. Shoes, I, I like to look at that as occasionally being a necessary, I don't want to say evil, but a necessary adjunct. In other words, that we have a shoe that conforms to the foot and optimizes the foot ground interface and lets the foot work naturally. Uh, a lot of the uh, earlier uh, shoe wear design, especially in the running shoe industry, looked at pronation as a, a great evil and attempted to eradicate or block it with various anti-pronation devices, stability shoes, motion control shoes, uh, many of which the more recent studies show were not that effective in uh, accomplishing their uh, desired task anyway. Uh, and then lastly, I find that if we do these things correctly, 
very rarely do we need to use orthotics. And I think that can offend uh, many people, but I've always been in the business of trying to uh, talk a person out of using orthotics, or if they're going to uh, use the uh, least expensive and, and minimally supportive one, uh, in most cases that's possible. And the research does support that in in cases where a person does not have uh, a lot of foot deformity, um, the inexpensive orthotics are just as effective as the expensive ones. So good things to know. And then lastly, I would just say we want to be careful of isolationist or one variable uh, perspectives always. So, uh, you know, the human is designed to use this foot and this pronatory function as part of a kinetic chain, like a lower extremity uh, working to create movement. And we really want to think about whole body function. That's really, um, uh, you know, how we move uh, artistically and gracefully uh, integrating our whole beast and being. So I hope you enjoyed this talk. This was just an example of some of the uh, topics that we're going to be covering in master classes here at the Lifetime Athlete. Uh, this month of May is all about human locomotion, so we'll be looking at some other issues like the condition of plantar fasciitis, how to uh, recognize it, uh, treat it, prevent it, maybe never get it in the first place. Uh, we'll look at speed development and running shoe selection, some other topics, but uh, beyond that we're going to look at other areas in the human body, topics like the shoulder, back pain, uh, advanced training methods, you name it. So if you'd like to check out a masterclass, uh, just go to lifetimeathlete.com, check out the masterclass page. You'll get a bit more information about how these work. And if you uh, can join us for one, that would be wonderful. Hey, hope you got something out of this video, guys. Thanks for being with me. This is Coach Jay-Z signing off from the Lifetime Athlete, where you can achieve peak performance at any age and be hard to kill.